Welcome to Empowerment Radio. My name is Dr. Friedman, and I'm so glad that you decided to join me. Empowerment Radio is about giving you the insights, tools, and solutions to address some of the most challenging aspects of our daily lives. So sit back, relax, and empower yourself. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. Uh, meditation is what I would love to share with you because I find, especially during these times, it's such a really essential uh, technique and tool to have in your life skills toolbox. How do you meditate? What do you do? I mean, you know, I find it's very simple to have a few ground rules or ground uh, or frameworks for, for meditation to really work well. And one is that you are really having a, a space where you meditate, where no one is barging in and, uh, you know, disturbing you, you turn your phone off, you have a little sign maybe outside the door, I'm meditating, don't dare to come in. And uh, then you sit and uh, don't lay down because that's what I did wrong, that I fell asleep in the bathtub every time I tried to meditate. It's not a good idea. So better to sit, a little propped up. It's harder to fall asleep. And easiest thing is to close your eyes, set your intention, like an intention to maybe just feel more calm and centered and then start breathing. Very, very simple. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. It's often recommended. Five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale. Or another one is six seconds inhaling, seven seconds holding, ex, uh, eight seconds exhaling. Things like that are really, really easy. And I, as I said before, don't have an expectation. Just see this as I'm meditating. I may not be Dalai Lama yet, but I'm meditating and that's already great. And after 10 seconds, your mind gets bored or your mind says, yeah, you have done enough. There is a whole to-do list to look at or whatever your mind says to pull you away. Maybe it says, oh, you're uncomfortable. Oh, you're hungry. Oh, maybe, you know, you're itchy and it's all fine. It's just a way for your mind to you know settle in as well because your mind is not used yet to this beautiful moment of calmness and peace so stay with it don't be mad at yourself or your mind don't buy into it you can twitch around a little bit you may want to scratch your nose but then come back to focusing on the breath and then after a while again five minutes ten minutes uh, at the beginning, it feels like five hours, but after maybe the second or third time, you feel like, whoa, where did the time go? Because you were really in it, and it feels very good. Now, another thing about meditation that I find is helpful is to have uh, an eye position that actually is stimulating your uh, endocrine system, your pituitary gland, and that's something I have learned in Kundalini Yoga which is simply to close your eyes and then turn your eyes upwards and uh, as if you are looking from the inside at this dot here, this, uh, uh, the third eye, the space between your eyebrows and maybe half an inch up. You just gently turn your eyes in and that is actually stimulating your pituitary gland and your pituitary gland is uh, you know, obviously the master gland that is responsible for our hormonal balance. It's one way to keep your mind busy. It's one way to stay more focused. An additional way can be just how you hold your hands. You, know, you can just have this, uh, this meditation space where your index finger and thumbs are touching or you are moving with your fingers every finger is touched by your thumb you start with the index finger and then go middle and then ring and then little finger and then you start again with the index finger so you can do that a great way is also to have a mantra you know whether a, a mantra that is in a different language just like you know in in a language that comes from the more yoga tradition or you use a word that you resonate with if you want to actually have more in your life like peace or freedom, or joy, and let just the word be itself a vibration. You know, ultimately, when we meditate, we become like tuning forks, and whatever we are thinking or focusing on is vibrating, and a mantra is a form of a vibration, and it really works well just to focus on the word and let that word be that centering piece. 
Now, I personally also love to visualize. So when I meditate, I often visualize a light inside of me, a light in my heart. And with each breath, this light just gets fed uh, by, let's say, life force energy or chi. So I'm inhaling this energy and then the light inside of me gets wider and brighter and it expands from that center of your being, becomes the size of your heart, the size of your chest, it becomes your entire body. And at some point it goes beyond your body and surrounds you. That is a wonderful also way to meditate because afterwards you feel, wow, I am so much lighter, literally. And I am surrounded by this energy that I have generated that makes me feel safer, that makes me feel more at ease. So these are really simple things to do that you can always switch around with. You can do guided meditations, of course. Guided meditations are wonderful. They're a little lazy because you are actually letting yourself be guided, which is totally fine. It's just, you know, the difference between, you know, a little uh, workout and uh, a massage. And the guided meditation is just something where someone leads you. And that's a, a great way also to center your mind. But do both because ultimately you want your mind to listen to you and not to somebody else. I mean, on my YouTube channel, there are many guided meditations. I invite you to visit it and look at it. Uh, but again, there is uh, just something also about you being the master of your mind. And for that, just uh, to mention why the breath is so important, because if you're controlling your breath, you're actually controlling your mind. You know, it's uh, clear when we are stressed, our breath goes faster. And as our breath goes faster, our mind realizes, oh, he's breathing fast. So there must be really something going on. And then it goes more into that stress cycle. If you are slowing down your breath, there is also a feedback loop that the mind says, hmm, breath slow down deep and uh, full. That may mean that everything is okay. And that breath can also then calm down your mind. So as I said, meditation is something everyone can do. You can also do walking meditations. A lot of people just feel like they cannot sit still. So in, uh, in Shabbala uh, Buddhism that I have been uh, you know, doing for several years uh, while in Seattle, a beautiful way of meditating is just walking in a circle, having your eyes open and really feeling every step is a meditation. Uh, some uh, really uh, wise person told me once that the best way to meditating is either ironing the shirts or doing the dishes. Some people find the best way to meditate is to laugh. There are many ways of meditating. It's all just with the intention to get your mind back into a centered place, back inside of you, back on the focus that you are giving it, not the focus that's searching, but the focus that you are choosing to give it, which is that focus of let's be here and now. And then, you know, afterwards, again, you see the world completely different. Now, I find personally, and I have to say, I am a trainer in hypnotherapy. So I love hypnotherapy. I love hypnosis. And I find that it's kind of astonishing that not so many people are using it, you know, for themselves in self-hypnosis. And I think it has to do with all these uh, hypnosis shows, you know, that you watch where people are just like, you know, clacking like chickens or, you know, strangers are made believe that they are madly falling in love and they all do this crazy stuff. And so you think like, nah, I don't want to be hypnotized. A, uh, I don't want to be controlled and B, I cannot be hypnotized because I'm way too strong for that. And so they are all, again, these misconceptions that I want to talk about that really help you to embrace uh, self-hypnosis or hypnosis as just an alternative to stay calm. Now, there have been plenty of studies as well that have shown how hypnotherapy is actually really, really legitimate and effective. They have shown that, uh, for example, with weight loss or smoking, uh, stop smoking, that uh, this is hypnosis, hypnotherapy is more successful than uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. 
and especially in conjunction with uh, CBT, it has been shown to be uh, you know, really augmenting the effect. It has been shown effective for pain management, especially also with children post-surgery or with women that were going into labor. And it is very effective with stress and anxiety management. So it's, it's really, it works. You just have to know how to do it. Now, the difference between meditation and self-hypnosis is that when you do meditate, you have more a focus. You know, you're, I mean, when you, when you do self-hypnosis, you do have more a focus. That means you have an intention. So with meditation, your, uh, your intention is to be calm and centered and being in the present moment. When you do self-hypnosis, you're actually focusing on a specific outcome. Let's say you have a problem that you want to resolve or you have a pattern that you want to change or you want to you know, feel more confident in a certain situation, whatever it is. So you, you do actually have more a blueprint that you want to then manifest when you're meditating. So when you look back at these neurons and these pathways that are creating between the neurons, meditating brings them all into a more calmer place to be more open. Uh, Self-hypnosis actually creates new neural pathways, new patterns, new ways of thinking, and is therefore a little bit more proactive than when you just do meditation. But again, I want to address the concerns that people often have, which is the fear of losing control as one. Now, no one can make you clack like a chicken. No one can, you, can make you fall in love with a stranger. That doesn't mean that these shows that I just you know, mentioned before don't exist. I mean, this is all fake. These are all paid actors. It just means that these people decide to do this. These people decide to be hypnotized and let themselves just go. These are the people that let themselves go anyhow. When you watch a hypnosis show, you know that the person who does the show is carefully selecting for the most outgoing or most expressive people. People that they intuitively know would at any party stay on the table, have the lampshade on and just dance, you know, in the most uh, wild manner. So those are the people that are also easily taking on suggestions that are a little crazy and that make people laugh. So they are hypnotized, but they're choosing to be hypnotized. So if you choose to say no to any of the suggestions that you would receive or give yourself, nothing's gonna happen. So you have to really know you are in control. Nobody can make you do something unless you're choosing to do it, unless you're choosing to have that suggestion, suggestion um, internalized. The other thing is that it's also the question about, you know, do I uh, have the ability to get hypnotized? And the answer is everyone can. And you're not weak or gullible or maybe a little, uh, you know, stupid if you are able to get hypnotized, it's actually the opposite. Mostly when people are highly intelligent and very creative, it's much easier for them to get hypnotized because they can easier go into that different mindset. There's a greater sense of flexibility there. And let's face it, we all get hypnotized all the time. You watch a show or a film, and you're so in it and you just really smell the water or the gunpowder and you know you are really living with the characters and identify yourself with them and that is a form of hypnosis because you're losing time you're losing the context of now and you are in there and that's the same thing that happens when you're reading a book and you're not really focusing on the words anymore you're just focusing on the images and the feelings that the words evoke inside of you. So any time when we are feeling and sensing something beyond that, what is really right there, something that we imagine, something that you know, is uh, triggering this deeper part of the mind, the subconscious to create a film, a movie, an experience, that is 
when we are ultimately in a hypnotic in a hypnotic trance and that hypnotic trance is something we can also then use for our benefit as we go through certain steps that i'm gonna explain to you right after the break so stay tuned hi dr friedman here thank you for tuning into my youtube channel if you're interested in learning more about fear and anxiety here you'll find guided meditations, webinars, and interviews with some of the most renowned experts in the field of empowerment. Delve into the over 230 videos and more to come every week.